Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Chemistry Tutor. In this lesson, we're going to close uh, close our, our, our body of knowledge up and kind of wrap it into a nice bow. And we're going to talk about what we call ideal gases, which are real gases. We've been careful to say that this whole thing, that the ideal gas law and all of the other uh, brother and daughter laws, the Charles's Law, Boyle's Law, all that stuff that you can wrap up into the ideal gas law, that that was va basically true for what we called perfect gases. And I was a little bit vague about what a perfect gas was on purpose, but I did tell you that at, for most conditions at room temperature and room pressure, or atmospheric pressure, most gases are pretty close to being ideal, okay? Um, but we did say that it was an approximation, that real gases uh, are never ideal and that no gas is ever perfectly ideal. And so we were careful to say that the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT, that we've been using this whole time, is a great approximation, but it's not perfect. So here we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when we start to look at the gases that are real gases, that are not ideal. That's why it's called non-ideal gases. So we've been using the relation uh, PV is equal to NRT uh, again and again and again, and we use this for lots of different cases. We used it to calculate the gas density, and we used it to calculate the molecular mass, and we used it to calculate uh, all kinds of things in stoichiometry. Um, but basically, this equation is really only useful for these ideal gases, which are perfect. Okay, And remember, a perfect gas consists of all these little molecules um, but we make some uh, fundamental assumptions in what perfect gases are. One of the assumptions is that the gas molecules, even though we know that they're there and that they're smashing into each other, we assume that they're perfectly infinitesimally small point particles. But real gases have molecules and they have a fixed size to them. So in a real gas, they're not point particles, they have a physical size uh, that they manifest on the atomic level. So that makes, uh, you know, that's an assumption that we use in the ideal gas law that's not really true for real gases, okay? Another one is that for ideal gases, we assume that these collisions are happening and all of these gas molecules are slipping past each other and they're not really interacting other than colliding. In other words, there's no molecular attraction going on at the atomic level. But in real life, when you have especially high pressures forcing a lot of gas molecules very close together, they're slipping past each other, but as they interact, they can have, there can be some molecular attraction happening down at, at, the, at the fundamental molecular level. Okay? Well, that's not really ideal gas behavior. So for the ideal gas law, we simplify everything, and we say these gas molecules, they're point sources, infinitesimally small points that move around and collide. And they don't really interact with each other other than collisions. They don't attract each other. They don't do much as they slide past one another. Both of those things are really not true for real gases. 